May elders keep someone from taking the Lord's Supper. That's the question that we're looking at in today's daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. It's December 10th, 2020. It's Thursday. And we are here together for another devotion. I'm thankful that you're here with us. So let's turn to God's Word and hear from Him as we... Open the Bible into the New Testament and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read verses 6 through 13. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you were to judge? God judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. That's one of several of our study passages that are down in the description for today's devotion. Those study passages come together and they give us our theology portion. As we turn to Westminster Larger Catechism, question 173, it asks, May any who profess the faith and desire to come to the Lord's Supper be kept from it. Such as are found to be ignorant or scandalous, notwithstanding their profession of the faith and desire to come to the Lord's Supper, may and ought to be kept from that sacrament by the power which Christ hath left in his church until they receive instruction and manifest their reformation. You know, from time to time, we turn to Johannes Voss's writing, his expansion upon the thoughts that are in our theology portion there, the Westminster Larger Catechism, and we're going to turn to that again. So we read Voss uh, expanding upon this thought, considering what he has uh, to say. Uh, he, he asked the question, what classes of people are to be excluded from the Lord's Supper? Well, it really drives home what, what we're looking at here. So this is what Voss wrote. Such as are found to be ignorant or scandalous. By ignorant, the catechism means persons who do not make a proper profession of faith. The profession of faith of an ignorant person is inadequate for admission to church membership or to the Lord's Supper. This inadequacy may be the result of lack of information or it may be the result of false doctrines held by the applicant. Thus, an applicant who did not know that Christ died on the cross to save sinners, or did not know that salvation is by free grace and not by works, would have an inadequate profession because of lack of information. On the other hand, an applicant who professed belief in the universal fatherhood of God and brotherhood of man would have an inadequate profession because of false doctrine. Both kinds of ignorance, mere lack of knowledge and actual profession of error constitute a legitimate ground for exclusion from the Lord's Supper or from church membership, as we see in Titus 3.10. By scandalous, the catechism means person whose profession cannot be taken at face value because it is contradicted by their manner of life. Scandal does not mean any sin or fault whatever, but only such sinful conduct as would nullify the person's profession and render it improper 
to admit him to the Lord's Supper or to the membership of the church. Such scandal might take many different forms, and the circumstances would have to be taken into account to arrive at a just decision concerning it. The Catechism wisely refrains from attempting to provide a ready-made definition of either ignorance or scandal. It lays down the principle, which is undoubtedly scriptural and therefore valid, and wisely leaves the precise application of the principle to the church courts before which such matters properly come for decision. The decision as to whether a particular applicant is ignorant or scandalous in a way which would exclude him from church membership or from the Lord's Supper must be made by the church officers whose duty is to pass on his application. In the course of time, every denomination acquires a body of precedents from decisions of such cases which have the effect of church law in deciding similar cases. Thus, a denomination may have a settled church law or rule that professional gamblers cannot be admitted to church membership or to the Lord's Supper, or a denomination may have a church law that members of oath-bound secret societies must be excluded. In each case, the denomination has applied the principle set forth in the catechism that the ignorant or scandalous are not to be admitted. So, yes... The session or the elders of a local church, they not only may, but they have the responsibility to keep some individuals from taking the Lord's Supper. That is for the protection of those individuals, for the glory of Christ and the betterment of the church. So we'll continue our our daily devotions in the next few days as we're in our mini, mini season dealing with the Lord's Supper. I look forward to those opportunities to do that with you. Until we're together again, may our great God bless and keep you.